Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here. You know, I think the best way to just kind of start this conversation, um, can, I'm looking over your bio, and right at the beginning, I'm reading about a federal complaint that you had against the Pennsylvania Department of Education. It, it, would that be okay if we just started there and just kind of worked into things from that? That would be terrific because it will set the stage of what Common Core is all about. Excellent. And Common Core is what's happening right now in the schools. So when I filed this federal complaint whenever my son was in the eighth grade, and um, and I guess to set the background, I have to ask you the question, and I want you or listeners to think about this. How do you score and test attitudes and feelings, beliefs, and dispositions. And this is where I'm coming from. It's a whole entire mental health agenda. So when you think about it, how do you test an attitude? How do you score it? So my whole complaint was based on the Pennsylvania Department of Ed, which was the model for the national testing. They were testing and scoring the attitudes, values, and dispositions of our kids. When I found out about it, um, I just asked the questions, you know, where did this test come from? What are you doing with the data that you're getting on the kids? So this is where I started completely. So when you talk about the new agenda of Common Core, it relates to what actually happened, which was all of the research 20 years ago. Mm. So at that time, it was called Outcome-Based Education, OBE. And the parents at that time, um, there was a book written about my journey of filing the federal complaint called Educating for the New World Order. And we actually stopped outcome-based education becoming law. But the research continued, the curriculum was being created to change the attitudes and values of your children. So when you say, well, how did they score that? Well, the government puts a score on what attitude they want your child to have. So when they ask these personal questions on the test, they'll ask you, what would you do if your best friend would do this? The correct answer is always you would go along with the group. Now I have the testing, I have the scoring. It was all geared toward collectivism. So basically what was happening that they would take this research of which children were independent thinkers and which ones were not. They would create curriculum and then do pilots all over the country. And it was what they called validated curriculum or model curriculum to change the attitudes of your kids. So this is where I'm coming from. Um, now, my, my, I, I've got to ask, this is Scotty, Anita. Um, I've got to ask, my understanding of Common Core when it first came out, wasn't that being billed as really just promoting the three R's and having a common base of educational standards for kids across the country and all the different state governments. And now you're saying this is something dramatically different when you start getting into, in a sense, social experimentation. Right. It's complete psychological interventions. It's complete. Um, it's, com- it's a complete mental health agenda. The agenda was put in place under the Department of Labor. The Department of Labor created this, um, I, would, I would say, this, this whole entire concept where they stated that um, the two most important things that they wanted kids to learn in school was, one, functional literacy, and two, good interpersonal skills according to what their standards were. That booklet you can still get. I go on Amazon every once in a while. It's called um, the Secretary's Commission for Achieving Necessary Skills from the Department of Labor. And what they said was they are going to create human capital for the future. They're, so wait, I'm sorry, they're, they're going to create what? Human capital. Human, human capital, capital for, for the future economy. Correct. So what they were going to do is they were going to test or assess the kids and they were going to change them. So when you look at the word assessment, assessment is the value that you place on property. Correct. 
Thus, you have the word human capital. Now, where does that take us to now? You are correct about the original uh, Common Core were based on language arts and math. But you have to remember what the criteria was, functional literacy. So when you say you're going to create federal standards, the Common Core standards was a huge power shift. The power shift was away from your teacher in the classroom and local control, and it was then given to the federal government. So these these Common Core standards once, and they were actually developed not by the federal government, but by the chief state school officers. This, this would be the Secretary of Ed of every state and the National Governors Association. Now, now you also said that this was really started by the Department of Labor, and that piqued the first question that came to my mind is, what is the Department of Labor doing trying to set policy or standards for the Department of Education? Well, correct. Well, they wanted to create this new human capital for the new global economy. So the whole agenda was actually the United States children were being educated too well. So they had to put a limit or what they called functional literacy. And these are their words. These are not my words. Their papers actually say functional literacy and the right attitudes and values. So when the Common Core standards were thrust upon the states, okay, and what happened there is when, um, when we had the Recovery Act and they had all the stimulus funds, Obama put $400 million into Race to the Top funding. So the states were grabbing for this money, but in order to grab the money, they had to do the standards. Therefore, we were moving toward a nationalized education agenda it's where you had a national test, national standards, and eventually national teacher certifications in order to create this human capital that they wanted. So we're moving very quickly toward that national curriculum and nationalized education in the United States. So basically what happened under Obama, there were three things that happened after this, the standards were pushed on the states. So the first thing that happened was that you had this, the, that the Common Core um, was this power shift away from local control. It used to be that your teacher created the standard. Now you had this feder these federal guidelines. Um, it would standardize what would be taught, what would be tested. We are moving toward what is known as a state diploma. If you have a graduation test in your state, this is the new graduation requirement, which means you are moving toward a state diploma. So, so in a very in a very real sense, we're looking at federal control of state public schools. Absolutely. All right. Okay. All right. And it gets and it gets worse. I mean, this was the first step, and you realize that was back in two thousand and eight. Okay. So now we have this this agenda moving forward, and there were other things that uh, President Obama had done. The second thing that he did was. He used an executive order, it's executive order 12866, to change the Privacy Act, which is called FERPA, and that's Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. And what this did was it allowed third-party contractors to access personally identifiable information on students and families. Oh, man. So what had happened there then, okay, so you have these individual standards now these federal standards that individual children have to meet in order to graduate. So we're moving away from academics and we're moving toward this functional literacy where, where every child has to have what they call an individual career pathway in order to graduate. So they have to meet these individual outcomes. Well, to meet the individual outcomes, you had to have a data system that would collect the individual data. So then what you had is that each state was given huge grants to set up what they called a state longitudinal data system to collect the data. And every person from birth 
to age 20 at that time were given a unique national ID. So what had happened is that they standardized the standards, they standardized the data elements for computer retrieval, and then they standardized everything else that all the kids were doing in the school. So you can't have a computer system that's going to monitor individuals unless everything is exactly the same. So, so once again, we see by presidential fiat or executive order, as it's commonly known, <clears throat> the, the, the executive branch has now usurped the right to gather all of this personal information on every student in the United States. Absolutely. You know what? Okay, let's, let's, so let's, they start. They started around in 2008. Um, if anybody wants to get their own state plan, I have them all, and all they'd have to do is Google Hogue um, Christmas Present to America, and it has all the links for every state to go get your um, state longitudinal data grant. And you can see where you are in the process. Anita, let's 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 hold that thought just for one second, folks. I I don't even know where to begin in my in my brain right now on absorbing this information because this just what we just heard in the last 10, 12 minutes is far beyond my understanding of what I thought Common Core was. We're talking with Miss Anita Hoag about Common Core and much much more, folks. We're just going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Rocky Stucci program right here on talknetwork.com. Stand by.